Hello. In this video, I'm going to highlight the multiple different ways to save an image once you captured them in the InFocus Microscope software. Once we have the software loaded and we have a live image, the first thing we need to do is capture an image. This is simply done by clicking the Snap button. When we snap an image, you'll notice that a new tab appears at the top and shows us that we captured that image. Please note there are many different ways to save an image in the InFocus software. I'm going to highlight them all now, and I'm going to snap multiple images in order to do so. We select the image we want to capture, in this case is our first image, and the simplest form of saving an image is simply clicking this Save button or hitting Control S. When you do that, it brings us our Save As dialog, and it allows us to pick a location, in this case my desktop, give it a name, test, and also select the file format. There are many different options, I'm going to select JPEG. Once we click Save, we are done. It gives us, renames the image at the top as test.jpg, and this image is saved. The second option is this icon next to it called Quick Save or Control Q. Quick Save saves us a step and we can predefine image parameters on how to save it. In order to set those, we go to Options, Preferences, Quick Save, and here we can set the same kind of setup where we can select our directory. In this case, I'm going to select Desktop again. We can create a subfolder, which I'll highlight again in a minute, and then we can pick a name format, which can be a sequential name format or a series of date and time as well. The most common being sequential because some, most people like to name the image uh, with a number. We've set the file prefix, again in this case test, the file type, and really nicely we can see here our sample. So this is where and how it's going to look when we click Save. We click Apply and OK. And now, with clicking the Quick Save icon, it's going to say, OK, do we want to rename the image or not? In this case, I am happy with how it looks, and I'm going to click OK. If we want to save us one even more step and not have this Rename dialog appear, we can uncheck this Show Rename dialog. We click OK. And now, when we go to our next image and we click Save, it's going to automatically save that image. Very simple. The next one I want to highlight is called Batch Save. Now you notice we have a bunch of unsaved images here, and if you have the situation where you capture images for a part and you want to save all of the images in a row after you capture said part, or a slide book that you want to capture images of each slide first and then save them with the same file prefix, we can do that simply with a Batch Save. We go to File, Batch Save, and it brings us to this familiar format that we're used to. Here we have a directory. Again, I'm going to save it to the desktop. Here I'm going to show you the subfolder uh, solution or option that you can do as well. Notice again when I select a subfolder, look here in sample, what it's going to do is add a subfolder, in this case giving it the date of capture. Again, this can be really nice when you want to add a new folder instead of saving all of your images in the same folder that all of your other images are saved in already. We can again select the name format, save a prefix, select the file format, and we're ready to go. Now notice when I click Save, it's going to rename all of my unsaved images as a batch with, again, sequential numbering, giving it the file prefix I assigned. That's it, we're good to go. That pretty much covers, the last thing I wanna show you is that if you have an image or two that is unsaved, again, the asterisk means that it's unsaved, and we can either close out of the image here well, the software's smart and it's going to say, well, wait, you didn't save this image. Let me make sure you don't want to lose that image by prompting you, do you want to save the changes? We click yes, and it brings us again to our save as dialog. And again, we can give it test one and save. That pretty much covers it about the different options of how to save an image in the InFocus software. Please feel free to reach out to iMiller Optical at 215-925-2285 with any questions and we would be glad to help. And please check back in for more videos of how to calibrate, annotate, and do much more that this InFocus software can offer. Thank you.